So Israel's morale is high, the Philistines' morale is low, and they go into battle. They hadn't realized just because the symbol of God is there does not mean that God is there. And 30,000 Israelis die. Hophni and Phinehas get killed. And the Ark of the Covenant is captured by the Philistines. You just cannot even hardly begin. I was trying to think of what in our world this would even match up to. And I could not come up with anything that would match up to in our thinking what happened here when the Ark of the Covenant is taken by the Philistines. Somebody who doesn't get killed in the battle runs back to Shiloh. Eli is an old man. I think the Bible said 98 years old. He's fat. He's sitting on a chair. He comes in and they, they say to him, the Israel's been defeated. Hophni and Phinehas, your sons have just been killed. And they took the Ark of the Covenant. And this was such a heavy blow that he falls over backwards off of his seat and breaks his neck and dies right there. So in one day, you have the father and the two boys. We won't go into the rest of it. Some other family members die on this exact same day because God said, everybody hears this. Their ears are going to tingle at what I do here. You're the, everybody's going to understand what took place. Our focus this morning is not so much on this story. Our focus this morning, though, is on the hearing the voice of the Lord. So that'll be our title this morning, Hearing the voice of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we cannot get where we need to go from here unless you take us. But Father, in this crowd, there are so many different needs that no one could meet any of those needs. But Father, you could meet all of them. And so we come in absolute dependence the best we know how to depend on you to do your work, to use your word, to, t to feed each of us with that living bread that we are so desperate for. May we hear your voice today speaking in our hearts. Please, dear Father, for the glory of the Lord Jesus, do this thing. For we ask this in his precious holy name. Amen. The scope of the subject at hand is far too large for any one message. We're going to try to cover two main aspects today. The first aspect we'll try to cover is the good and bad possibilities of hearing the voice of the Lord. The good and bad possibilities of hearing the, verse, the voice of the Lord. And two, the necessities for hearing the voice of the Lord. So we'll cover the good and bad possibilities of hearing the voice of the Lord. And then the necessities in order to hear the voice of the Lord. So first off, the good and the bad possibilities of hearing the verse of the Lord. If we would search through the scriptures, we would find four basic possibilities concerning hearing the Lord's voice. They're also actually all found in this passage. So we'll list them and then we'll look at them. A, the Lord chooses not to speak. B, the Lord speaks and we choose not to listen. C, the Lord speaks in a way that we cannot fail to hear. Or D, the Lord speaks and we choose to listen. In the, in the scriptures, this is what you find people have done, and we actually find it in this passage. So let's walk through these very quickly here. Uh, the good and bad possibilities of hearing the voice of the Lord. A, the Lord chooses not to speak. The Lord chooses not to speak. We find this in verse number one. The Lord Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. From the first chapter of the scriptures, we find that God is a communicator. God speaks, and God communicates. It's all from cover to cover. He walked with Adam and talked with Adam in the cool of the day. All through the scriptures, we find that God is actually a communicating God. He loves to talk with people. We find that God is a communicator. There is times where God chose, however, not to communicate. He can communicate, but he chooses not to do so. This is the case in this story. The word of the Lord was precious in those days. It was scarce. 
my friend, this is a very, very bad thing. We often take the voice of the Lord for granted. He speaks in our heart, and we assume that it will always be so. But that is not necessarily the case. Amos 8.11 is almost scary words in my thinking. Behold, the, day com the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. Those are terrifying words. What would we do if God would choose to be silent to our nation, to this church, or to us as an individual? What would we do? An old saying, you know, I like old sayings. If I give you the old saying, you don't worry about the water. Oh, that was pathetic. Are you guys not doing your going? You don't worry about the water till the well runs dry. See, we have heard the voice of the Lord speaking in our hearts. And we sometimes end up taking this for granted. But what would you do if the Lord decides to not speak? Think about what that would mean in your life. Would we be like Saul, who when the Lord would not speak to him anymore, went to the witch at Endor? And you say, why in the world would he do that? Because he was trying to get some direction in his life. And you think, how foolish can a man be? But what will you do when you're desperate? There are times when the Lord chooses not to speak. And this is a very bad thing. It is not what we, we should not take for granted, the speaking voice of the Lord. If God would choose to quit speaking, what would we do? For at times, he does choose not to speak. Letter B, God speaks, but people choose not to listen. God speaks, but people choose not to listen. Eli had been warned many times about his sons. Eli knew of their misconduct, but he had put them above the Lord. He had put them there and chose to ignore the Lord's warnings. I don't care what you're saying, Lord. I know my son. And he didn't want to disrupt his sons, and he chose to ignore the Lord. How often has not, this not happened in history? You know, Noah preached for 120 years. And there were only eight people who got on that ark. The rest of them were ignoring the word of the Lord. Lot, when he went into Sodom to warn his sons-in-law about the coming doom, they it seemed to him as one that mocked, it said. Moses was specifically told to speak to the rock. And he chooses to ignore the word of the Lord and strike the rock. Over and over again, we find God speaking and men choosing not to listen. The most tragic of this is told to us in John chapter number 1. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. God the Father sends his Son, and we choose to ignore. Men choose to not listen. My friends, the voice of the Lord is precious, and when he speaks, it's too valuable to ignore. There are lots of things that we allow to affect our listening to the voice of the Lord. Often when he speaks, we're too busy to hear, we're preoccupied. There's too much noise around us, things calling for our attention. Often we're not really paying attention to the voice of the Lord. We're not really expecting him to speak to us. And many times, we just plain don't want to hear what he has to say. It's a very, very bad thing for the Lord to speak and for us to choose not to listen. This is a very bad thing. Letter C, the Lord speaks in a way that we cannot fail to hear. Sometimes he chooses not to speak. Sometimes he speaks and we choose not to listen. The Lord does speak, letter C, in a way that we cannot fail to hear. My friend, this is not good. The Lord had spoken to Eli concerning his sons. Eli had chosen not to listen. So the Lord chose to not speak for a while, at least for the moment. 
Eli may have gotten the idea that somehow he had won over and the, the voice of the Lord and he didn't have to listen to that anymore. It wasn't going to be a big deal. Somehow it's not going to be a problem if I don't correct my sons. The Lord was choosing to not speak at that time, but that isn't the end of the story. We have verse number 11. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at both at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. The Lord had not spoken, but when he decided to speak, it was unmistakably his voice. He said, everybody that hears what I'm going to do here, their ears are going to be ringing from this. This is going to be so enormous. You're going to hear my speaking voice. Let me ask you this. Did your mother ever use your full name? Isn't that funny? <laughs> we all have this common denominator in our life. In our family, mom always used, well, we all had names, but I don't know that mom ever used them. If you know mom at all, we all had nicknames that make absolutely no sense whatsoever, but that's just the names. I won't tell you what mine is, but every now and then she calls me pastor and then my nickname. <laughs> I won't tell you what the rest of the family's nicknames are either. If you know mom, you know that they're way out there, okay? They don't make any sense. And so mom, you would hear her say, hey, Scott, or she'd call me by my nickname. She'd say, take out the garbage, or do da 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 or, You know, you play video games, you can just zoo, zone that right out. And all those things, you can just, she could use your name, da 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 and you just, nothing. And then you heard Scott Allen Vanderhart. You know what I'm talking about? Life just took a turn for the worse. This is an unmistakable voice. And it's no longer, I'm going to be able to put this off. It's no longer the same situation even. You're, when she used that tone of voice, you already knew. Life is bad and there's no recovery from this. This is all going to run downhill on me, right? Because I had, she had been speaking and I had chosen not to listen. But then she chose to speak in a way that I could not fail to hear. And my friend, God is able to do this. He is able to speak in a way that you cannot fail to hear. I'm not saying this is a good thing. I'm saying this is a very bad thing. Do not be deceived. Just because God chooses to not speak or just because you are ignoring his voice for weeks or days, months or years does not mean that he cannot speak and it does not mean that he's going to be the same way. He can speak in a way in your life that you will not be able to ignore. You will hear his voice when he wants you to, it's not a good thing. Do not force him to do that. Letter D, this is what we want. Letter D, he speaks and we choose to listen. He speaks and we choose to listen. This is ideal. We want the words of young Samuel to be the testimony of our life. Look at verse number 10. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Lord, you're speaking and I'm listening to everything that you're saying. This is good and profitable on all fronts. This is the way we want life to work. So we have the good and the bad possibilities of hearing the voice of the Lord. One, he chooses, A, he chooses not to speak. B, he chooses to speak and we choose to not listen. C, he chooses to speak in a way that we cannot fail to hear. D, the, what we really want is God speaks and we choose to listen. Now, if you followed me this far, you say, okay, I see the need for listening to the voice of the Lord when he speaks. So how does this happen? What are the necessities? What do I need in order for to hear the voice of the Lord? 
And we'll do this in numbers and instead of letters to keep it a little more clear. Number one, the necessities for hearing the voice of the Lord. Number one is the scriptures. The scriptures. If you want to hear the voice of the Lord, the scriptures are not optional. There are a lot of people and a lot of religions in the world today trying to hear the voice of the Lord either apart from the scriptures or while ignoring the scriptures. And my friend, this is a ridiculous notion. If you're going to hear the voice of the Lord, you cannot do so apart from the scriptures. As a hobby, I sell on eBay. And so I, when I list my stuff, I don't write very long descriptions. In fact, I don't write any descriptions at all. I put in 12 really good pictures, because a picture's worth a thousand words. So I put in 12 really good pictures, and the last picture that I put always is a ruler, the item with a ruler. So everybody knows the scale of whatever we're dealing with. They know exactly what this is and how big it is. There's a ruler in the last picture on every single one. It averages three or four times a week that I get an email, a message on eBay. And the question will be, how big is this? Now, you say, what? It is so common that my Kindle now automatically fills in the words for me. I just go, let's see, how, what does it say? I say, please see the last picture, or there's a ruler in the last picture, please see it, or something like that, and I just go click, 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 like that, and it automatically fills it into the thing. They've been asked that question so many times that it, my Kindle automatically fills in the words. You say, how can this be? Well, one, people aren't paying attention, and two, they're really not as interested, it's just, they're not, they're really not that interested. The fact of the matter is, 99% of the people who ask that question do not buy. They're not actually interested. They're just, and you're saying the information is there. Why are you asking this question? We might say the same to us. You have the scriptures. What more can he say than to you he hath said? He's already given us most of the information that we need. And to work and try to get him to, will you please tell me the answer? And the answer is right in front of us. Is a ridiculous notion to try to get to God to speak to us again when he's already said it. To try to hear the voice of the Lord without the scriptures is a ridiculous statement. If you are not serious enough about listening that you will look in the book to see what it says, then if God actually even spoke to you audibly, you would not take that serious either. He has already spoken through his word, and you cannot hear the voice of the Lord apart from that. The Spirit of the Lord uses the word, and you will not hear the voice of the Lord if you ignore the scriptures. They are absolutely necessary. So if you want, what are the necessities of hearing the voice of the Lord? Number one is the scriptures. Number two is obedience. Obedience. God never speaks just to hear the sound of his voice. Seventh and eighth graders do. God does not. <laughs> You older people understand that. God never speaks just to hear the sound of his own voice. Too often, we want to hear from God. We want to know his plan so that we can decide whether or not we want to do it. We're not really look, we're looking for the plan to be laid out so we can say, yeah, it's something I'd be involved with. No, I don't think so. My friend, this is not the way to hear the voice of the Lord. Obedience is expected in listening to the voice of the Lord. Suppose you use that same thought. I just want to hear what you have so that I can decide if I want to do it. Suppose you took that same thought to work with you. 
So when your boss spoke, you're, when he spoke, you listen to him to decide whether you want to do that or not. Okay, let's put it a little clear. I'm going to use Larry this morning. Larry called me last week. His, his, where he works, they are uh, rearranging, reorganizing. They're throwing a bunch of stuff. And so Larry says, we've got a bunch of wood that they're getting rid of. And so it's like a semi, or a, not a semi, a truckload of wood that we're getting rid of. Would you guys be interested in it? I took a look at it and said, yes, we could be interested in that. The academy could use that. So we were back, going back and forth on this. Meanwhile, Larry talks to his main boss. And the main boss says, uh, wait a second. We don't want to get rid of that right now. We may need some of that. And so until we're entirely done, we're not going to get rid of that. Now, what if Larry calls me tomorrow and says, you know, I don't care what the boss says. Come get the wood. <laughs> you know, Larry won't hear from this boss any more than one last time. Larry's going to need that wood to build himself a shelter by the river because he will be unemployed. You see, we cannot take that thought process into any other part of our life. We only listen to the boss when it makes sense to us, when we feel like we want to do what he wants to do. We don't take that into any other part of our life. If you're going to hear from the voice of the Lord, it has to be with obedience in mind at the get-go. Whatever he says, that's the way it is. That's what I'm going to do. He that will do my will shall know of the doctrine. And obedience is one of the necessities to hearing the voice of the Lord. Obedience is not an option, it's a necessity. Number three, a clean heart. We have to have the scriptures, we have to have obedience, we have to have a clean heart. Now this is actually part of number two, but we'll give it some special mention here. Harboring sin in your heart is a sure way of no longer hearing the voice of the Lord. Harboring sin in your heart is a sure way of no longer hearing the voice of the Lord. Let's be very clear here. The Lord, Jesus, is the pattern for life. Okay? We are all to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Okay, so he's the pattern. Now, if I had anybody stand up here and say, how many of you are totally, completely formed to the image of Jesus Christ? Stand up. I think we can safely assume that I'll sit down and the rest of you will remain seated. All of us say, boy, I've got a long ways to go on that. The Spirit of God, it's his, process, it's his job to move us through that process of conforming us to the image of Jesus Christ. Okay, I think we understand that. And all of us have in our, in our lives things that are not conformed to the image of Christ. When I sit down at Meyer Hall with a kid who's trusted Christ as Savior, now the Spirit of God, he's trusted Christ as Savior, now the Spirit of God is going to conform that young man to the image of the Lord Jesus. Correct? He's been put in the, th in the line. He's going to start moving forward. That's the, job. That's the goal. He's dis destined to be conformed to the image of Christ. Same process as working on me is working now on him to conform him to the image of Christ. Now, it's the same process. Are we dealing with the same events, the same issues? In that young man's life, okay, we're going to have to deal with the drug issue. We're going to have to deal with an alcohol issue. We're going to have to deal with some immorality. We're going to have to deal with some uh, deep, deep, deep anger and bitterness issues. Okay, the Spirit of God is going to deal with those in him. Same process as working on me, it's working on him, but he's dealing on those issues. Now this week, the Lord did not deal with me on any of those issues. Thank the Lord, because that's not where I'm at. I am 40 plus years down the road in this process, right? Same process, but I'm just 40 years down the road. This week, the Lord dealt in my heart. You know those little nuances of pride and self that pop up? One of the old-time writers uh, said it best. This is a great thought to put in the back of your mind. The rebel sigh. The rebel sigh. You ever do that this week? 
You've heard your teenagers do it. <sighs> right? Did you do that to God this week? You look at the lot in front of you, the path he's taking you down, and <sighs> the rebel sigh. You know what? The Lord had to work on me this week in several areas. Why? It's part of the process. He's conforming me to the image of Jesus Christ. Now, let me ask you this. The kid at Meyer Hall, did the Spirit of God deal with his rebel sigh? <laughs> no. Did he deal with that kid does not even know that that's a sin? That kid does not even know that those little nuances of pride and those little nuances of self are sin. He doesn't know that. Why? Because he's just starting down the road. Now let me ask you, so we're in the same process, just at different points on the process. Okay, now, what happens if the kid at Meyer Hall says, I am not going to give up my drinking? Or he says, I am not going to quit doing drugs, or I am going to keep stealing cars. You say, what, if I ask you, what happens to the process? Screeching halt, right? We're stopped there. Not moving forward on this, we can't move beyond that. We understand that. That's pretty clear. Well, what happens when I say, I'm going to keep sighing? Same exact thing happens. The process stops. Because I heard from the voice of the Lord. He told me that rebel sigh isn't the way this is going to go. Just the same as a kid heard from the Lord, uh, stealing the cars is no longer an option for you. Just the same it's the same process, just different pieces down the road. And when I say I won't do that, I've already heard from the voice of the Lord and I cannot expect anything else when I say no. I'm not going there. The process has stopped. If you want to hear the voice of the Lord, you've already heard it. On whatever sin that is, if you're harboring onto that, you're holding onto that sin, you have already heard the voice of the Lord. And you're refusing to deal with what you've already heard. And a clean heart it's an absolute necessity. The righteousness of Jesus Christ is the only righteousness we have. When we choose to not stand in that righteousness, we are choosing for the process to stop and to not hear the voice of the Lord beyond that point. A clean heart is an absolute necessity to hearing the voice of the Lord. Number four. The necessities are the scriptures, obedience, a clean heart. And number four is humility. It is amazing how proud and cocky human beings can get. Never ceases to amaze me how cocky we can get. I'll tell you what really amazes me is how arrogant little kids can be these days. It is unbelievable. When I was a kid, you never mouthed off to the big kids. You know why you didn't mouth off to the big kids? <laughs> they would pound you into the ground. And when you got out of that hole and crawled home, your dad would give you a whooping for being so cocky. That's <laughs> just the way life worked. You just didn't mouth off to the big kids. These days, if you watch, man, those little kids, they are so mouthy. We don't lose that much as we get older. We are very have a huge tendency to cockiness, to a huge tendency to pride. How proud can we get? Look at Pharaoh in the book of Exodus when he says, who is the Lord that I should hear his voice? Can you imagine the arrogance of that? But let me ask you, have you not said that at some area, point in your life? where God is trying to speak in your heart, and you said, who are you that I should have to listen to you? I don't think I'm going to do that today. This is arrogance. And if you want to hear the voice of the Lord, humility is one of the necessities to hearing the Lord. We must be exactly opposite of what Pharaoh was. Very often when I am really serious about the need, there are some days, you know, where the need to hear the voice of the Lord is, I mean, I got to hear it and I got to hear it soon because of the situation. 
very often when I find myself in that, that, I find myself face down on the floor with my hands like this. Lord, whatever's here, whatever needs to be taken, you take it. I'm face down before you because there is no other way. You cannot be in pride or in stiff neck cockiness before the Lord. If you want to hear his voice, humility is an absolute necessity. If we actually knew who we were trying to listen to, humility would not be an issue. You would be on all on your face before the Lord if you were trying if you knew who you were really trying to hear. It is a necessity to hearing the voice of the Lord. The necessities are the scriptures, obedience, a clean heart, and humility. Now, let me take a brief moment here to speak to you. There would be those here who would say, you know, I don't have a clue about what you're talking about. I don't suppose, I don't even know what you mean by hearing the voice of the Lord. What am I supposed to hear even? When you say hearing the voice of the Lord, what am I supposed to hear? Well, to start with, Hebrews 1.1. 1, 1. If you want to start with the hearing of the voice, what were you supposed to hear? Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 starts us out very clearly when it says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse or various manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, he hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. God has already spoken to you. And he spoke to you through his son. You say, well, what was I supposed to hear? What, was, what did he say through his son? Well, that's a huge question, but let me give you a couple of quick answers to that. One, he spoke to your son. When he did that, he told you that he loved you. If he, would not love, if he did not love you, he would not have sent his son. So the first thing you should have heard from God through his son is, I love you. This is the whole point of sending Jesus Christ because that was the, the purpose behind it is because he loved you. The second thing that you should hear from his son is that God hates your sin. Plain as plain can be that speaking. When your sin was placed on Jesus Christ, God the Father punished his own son like it was you. God hates sin. He doesn't tolerate it. He doesn't wink at it. He doesn't just kind of overlook it. God hates sin. And when you look at Jesus Christ dying on the cross, what, you, what is being said to you is God hates sin. And it must be punished. And Christ died for your sin. He died in your place. So you hear from, the, from Christ that God loves you. You hear that God hates sin. And three, you should hear that salvation from your sin is found in Jesus Christ. Salvation is found in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. There is no other answer to sin but Jesus Christ. And when you see Jesus Christ hanging on the cross, you see your sin being paid. When you see three days later him rising from the dead, this is God the Father saying to you, your sin debt is paid. If Jesus Christ were still in that grave, we'd all be in a world of hurt here. But because Jesus Christ rose from the dead, God the Father has already ruled on your case. When you see that empty tomb, what you're seeing is the fact that your sin debt has been totally and completely paid and the judge is satisfied. God has spoken by his son. Have you heard even the first thing that he said to you? That he loves you. That sin must be punished. He hates it. It must be punished. But that Jesus Christ is your salvation. Have you heard that much? The question for us this morning is, are we hearing the voice of the Lord? Let's pray.